Hello, friends. Yes. So, today, once again, I would like to uh, improve your vocabulary. And that is somewhat like my determination, that I must improve the vocabulary of the viewers, especially those who are trying to learn English, learn spoken English in the truest sense of the term, because uh, there, are, there is a great distinction. There is a significant distinction between uh, the uh, formal vocabulary and informal vocabulary. Now, when we uh, use, uh, when, when we write English, we generally try to use uh, uh, very formal vocabulary. But uh, when we uh, speak English, we do not generally use those words. So we use some other words which are uh, suitable, okay? Uh, and now the uh, question is, uh, if you speak uh, formal English, where's the harm? There's no harm. Go ahead, speak, if you like. But uh, you will not sound very uh, local. You will not sound very native, okay? So when you talk to an American or when you talk to an Englishman, maybe an Australian, try to use their vocabulary. If you use their vocabulary, they will feel more comfortable. They will feel more at home. And it is our responsibility to make our guests feel comfortable. So in your country, if you happen to come across any uh, foreigner, English-speaking foreigner, then uh, try to know which country he is from and try to use his vocabulary when you are communicating with him so that he feels at home. And that is our responsibility as the host. Okay? They are our guests. Well, he has not started throughout the year very seriously. But he has scored very high in the examinations. So this is, you must be surprised to hear this sentence all of a sudden. Well, here uh, we are going to learn, the, learn how to express the sense of the first part of the sentence in different English. That is, what is this? He has not studied seriously throughout the year. So you may say, he has not burned the midnight oil. He has not burned the midnight oil. So if you use this phrase, it is not only used in spoken English, it is used also in written English. So you are at liberty to use uh, on either occasion. But uh, if you use this kind of idioms, I feel, I personally feel that your English will sound a little uh, uh, native. You know, I don't know though, because I, I have never uh, claimed or I shouldn't claim that I know everything. But still, I have uh, talked to a number of uh, English people, American people, Australian people, and I have seen that they use idiomatic English when they speak, especially if they speak uh, to people from their own countries. When they talk to the Indians or from some other country, they generally they try to use uh, some uh, very ordinary words, plain words, so that uh, the foreigners can understand, okay? But uh, where if they see that you understand English very well, you have a good ground grounding in English, then they will, of course, uh, use their natural English. So, burn the midnight oil means to study seriously or to study hard. So, use the phrase when you speak English on similar occasions. Okay? Well, uh, I don't understand how he has scored so high in the examination. Now, I don't understand how he has scored so high in the examination. This is the sentence. The first part of the sentence, I don't understand. If I ask you to express the same sense in some different English words, how will you do that? If you ask me, I shall say, it beats me. It beats me how he has scored so well in the examination. Well. Now, say we are talking about a certain thing, we are talking on a certain topic, but suddenly I see that uh, you are digressing from the topic. Uh, you are not uh, speaking to the point. And then, to bring you back to the track, I will tell you, please come to the point. Come to the point. Now, this is a very common uh, expression. You know, everybody knows. But if you want to use some phrase for that, what will you say? Please cut the cackle. Please cut the cackle. Cut the cackle means come to the point. 
or you may use some other phrase as well that is uh, cut to the chase please cut to the chase that means please come to the point so these kind of expressions if you use uh, you will also feel very happy indeed when you speak english uh, i at least feel very satisfied when i use this kind of idioms and uh, phrases when i speak english and i try to do that as often as possible well next one maybe uh, say you are saying india have won the match very easily india have won the match why i'm using have after india that's the rule because when you are talking about a team you are using uh, the word of the, the name of the country india here india means the indian team consisting of 11 players now when you are talking about the indian team consisting of 11 players you are uh, supposed to use the i mean treat this word as a plural so i'm saying india have won the match very easily what are we going to learn here we are going to learn what we can use instead of easily india have won the match at a canter at a canter at a canter or sometimes i have seen the use in a canter so it means actually very easily they have made no effort at all to win the match well now say well, we often talk about uh, the uh, gadgets so we often talk about uh, the digitalization of uh, the education system and some countries are there especially some schools uh, rural schools where the infrastructure is not very strong they keep using the old traditional method so what are we going to learn here we are going to learn instead of old traditional method of teaching and learning what can we use we can say that the rural schools in india follow chalk and talk chalk and talk method chalk and talk method that means the traditional teaching method all right well uh, when say you are talking to somebody you are uh, willing to say that uh, you are in trouble you are in a situation from which you can neither go back nor go forward so such is the situation how will you express yourself you may say simply that i'm in trouble that's okay all right that will do the trick but if you use uh, some appropriate uh, expression for that appropriate idiom for that that will be better i feel at least personally well so what what can you use then you may say instead of i'm in trouble i'm in a situation from which i can neither go ahead nor go backwards so you may say i am in a cleft stick i'm in a cleft stick in a cleft stick is the phrase which means in a situation from which you can neither go ahead nor go backwards all right so well uh, say somebody asks you how you are and that day you are not physically very well you don't feel like doing anything you are you lack energy so when you lack energy you are going to say that well i'm not so well that's okay fine clear but instead of that if you want to use some phrase what will you use and very colloquial very colloquial phrase though the phrase is uh, said to be a little dated but still you can go ahead and use this that is out of curl out of curl c-u-r-l out of curl means um not not so well physically not so well uh, physically indisposed uh, you lack energy at the time you can use this uh, phrase or instead of uh, this phrase you can use a uh, uh, more common phrase that is i feel out of sorts i feel out of sorts okay you are really talk about uh, somebody who uh, earns money dishonestly who is making money a lot of money of course but dishonestly so how will you express yourself if you say in plain english that oh you are talking about mr x he earns money dishonestly okay all right no objection at all my dear friends but instead of that you may use a phrase and that is he is on the fiddle he is on the fiddle he is on the fiddle means he is earning money uh, quite dishonestly so he is uh, on the fiddle well uh, say somebody is uh, not very happy that day dejected quite dejected uh, he is uh, crestfallen he is uh, rather 
uh, he feels uncomfortable and a little depressed. So all these uh, words I have used now to express one idea only, and that is uh, he is uh, not very happy, unhappy. So how can you say that? By using a phrase? Yes, please try. Yeah. Oh, you can use this uh, phrase, uh, he is down in the mouth. What's the matter, Jack? You look quite down in the mouth today. You look quite down in the mouth, which means unhappy or dejected. Now, if you don't like to use this phrase, down in the mouth, you can use, you are down in the dumps. Why do you look so down in the dumps? So that phrase also means the same, that is uh, dejected, not very happy. So this kind of uh, phrases and expressions you may use, but uh, you say, say for example, you are uh, physically very fine, physically, mentally, you are very fine. So, and somebody asks you, how are you? You say, I'm well, I'm fine, I'm doing fine, I'm good. And in uh, our previous video, I uh, helped you with a word, with a phrase. I think you remember that. If you have watched that video, you must be able to remember that phrase. And that is, I am in the pink. I am in the pink. But today I'm going to tell you the synonym of I am in the pink. That is, I am in fine fettle. I am in fine fettle. All right, so we have already learned quite a number of words today. I think that this way, if I keep uh, adding uh, words and phrases to your vocabulary in uh, the days to come, your vocabulary will become very, very strong and you will not uh, lack words when you speak English. You will not feel that uh, you are at sea when you have to express yourself at sea. At the you are a little puzzled, you don't know how to express yourself, you get stuck somewhere, so you will not feel that. All right, so if you like this video session, please write your comments and uh, encourage me. Otherwise, I will feel very uh, down in the dumps. I will feel very down in the mouth. So you don't want me to uh, look down in the mouth. So please write a few comments and also uh, tell me what sort of uh, topics you want uh, in our upcoming videos and i shall try to make uh, videos according to your demand all right thank you very much see you again in our next video session bye bye